common ground is something we find really lacking um, in our society right now. Um, and, it, and it has so many meanings. Um, for us, as painters who all live on rural properties, the idea of ground, of soil, is, is part of it. Um, that we have that in common, that we've all had this background. We all grew up in kind of the same way on ranches, and, and uh, I think we have a huge respect for nature and um, all, the, all the things that go along with growing up in a rural uh, situation. We've been artists and mothers and farmers wives, we'll put it that way. And I know that when we get together that we have very common points of view. When we started talking about this show, we said we were going to paint things from our from our gardens, from our yards. Um, and I started looking at what was growing in my yard, which wasn't a lot. Um, so for this show, I have a lot of small paintings of specific flowers that, that grow in my garden. I would pick something in the garden, and I would bring it up here, and I, I would hang it from a piece of cardboard and, um, and paint and um, try to do it as quickly as I could before something died, um, which has been good for me because I tend to be a slow painter. So that's been kind of a fun process with this show, is when I was working um, as fast as I could to, to catch the flowers before they wilted. Half of them are on light backgrounds and half are on dark, which um, has been kind of fun to play with that dark and light um, and how different things look on different backgrounds. These are some of the works that I've done, say, for the last year. I've painted in this area for so many years, um, probably about 60 years. I'm always looking for things that I haven't painted before, a different kind of a shadow or a different kind of a light, or even if it's the same subject, to look at it from a distance or look at it with a different kind of a composition. That's where I am right now, is looking for inspiration that challenges me and that makes me paint a little differently. There's an anxiousness to my painting, and um, I remember when I was in school, there was one teacher said, you paint like you're gonna die in the night. And I said, well, that's the way I feel. There's a desperateness about painting outdoors and painting where things are changing all the time. And I do think that gets into why I paint with a sort of a wild brushstroke. What I'm doing in these oils is working with these layers of patterns that are almost jigsaw puzzles. They're, they're very uh, dense and, um, and intricate. The drawings are very intricate detailed drawings of the of the minutia of the of the plants and the creatures. I went back to drawing when my husband was sick. I just went to black and white and I've always been a colorist, but somehow that was a, a, a good way to work through a lot of things for myself. And I enjoy drawing. It's just it's um it's a very pleasurable, uh, very evolving uh, process. I mean, off both Susan and Nick. I don't think there's a, 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 a painter in our area who, is, who has a better grasp of composition than Susan Betty. Um, both her very realistic work and her abstract work, the compositions are just beautiful. There's a, a, a this sort of a tenderness of Gail's work, I think, which really appeals to me. I've always admired Gail's work of field workers and things like that. I feel that we're all hammering on the same nail. Meredith has a wonderful way with getting atmosphere, and she has a, a looseness and a freedom to her work. Art gives us a chance to have some common ground. Whether we interpret the art the same way or not, um, we, can, we can all look at something and, and enjoy it and maybe 
have some feeling about it, um, whether it's the same feeling that the artist wanted us to have or someone else might have. Um, it's, it's a little brief moment of comfort.